Good evening, everybody. I am, I am so blessed to be your speaker tonight. And I want to continue in the same vein that we did the last two weeks. And that is we are going out in twos in 2022. Now, in the very near future, two, in two weeks to be exact, <clears throat> we are going to win souls. All of us are going to participate and we are going to win souls to Christ. We are going to bring in some new friends. We are going to bring in some old acquaintances. We are going to win souls for Christ. And if we don't win them now, we are going to make a concerted effort and sow the seed and they will come in later. But we are going to win souls for Christ because this is our prayer. Yes, we have been eager. We have studied the word. We have been prayerful. We have been calling names to God and asking God, please help the, our loved ones, our friends, our co-workers to learn more and more about you. And we have engaged in some witnessing already. We have sowed some seeds and God is going to see that the harvest is watered and the souls are brought in. As I was, as I've already said, our Bibles give us give us the answer to any question our loved ones and our friends who are unchurched or who are saved in other churches may need. Any questions you want to know, we are going to ask the Holy Spirit to help us to be alert and to know what to say and when to say it, how to answer. Oh yes, this is the God we know, the God who feeds the hungry, who clothes the naked, and who helps with depression. There's a lot of it now, and we are going to be available to God to do these things for us. We are going to follow his commission. He said, go and teach, and I'm with you. And we praise his name for his promise. We're gonna spend time with Christ. We're gonna speak to the unsaved with confidence. We all have a testimony. I heard someone, some tonight, and I have some written down from some people who told me some. We all have a testimony about what he can do and what he will do. And we want to share, share God's blessings with compassion. Some people are out there already saying, it's my time. It's my season. God is going to do something for me. And the reason why I know they're saying that is because of what I know previously. You see, the Bible said, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world as a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So going to Jerusalem, Jerusalem is where we live, our own household, our sisters, our brothers, our cousins, aunts and uncles, whomever unsaved or unchurched or who are in churches, but who want to walk closer with God, who want to know more about him, who want to walk in righteousness, who want to embrace his high standards. Okay? And this gospel will be preached to help those people. And then we want to go to Samaria. Samaria is Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Everywhere you look, there is something that can be said in defense of the gospel. There is so much going on in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And we're gonna preach this gospel to the utmost parts of the earth. So we're gonna use the little saying that the young people used to say, we're gonna get off our seats, on our feet, in the street with the gospel beat. Oh yes, it's 
my time. They are saying out there, they're waiting for us. And it's my season. I'm praying to you, Lord, to do something for me and to help me. Now, guess what? It came to me today, you know, not today. Well, it came to me recently about two testimonies that I heard from two friends of mine. One's name was Pearl. Pearl loved God with a whole heart. She even went to Sunday church every Sunday. She even went to Bible class. She loved God. But she told me that the reason why I was reluctant to take a stand for Christ, she said, because it seemed like the standards in my church were too low. I said to myself one time, Pearl was telling me, God has high standards and he, he rules heaven and earth. He's a big God. And I wasn't getting what I wanted, she said. She said, so why, while I mused over that, I continued to go to church I continued to go to Bible class. And one day, two, two sisters knocked on my door and said, Miss Pearl, we were wondering, we got a handbill for you, a flyer. And we were wondering if you would like to come and hear the gospel in this crusade that we are having. And Pearl said, I eagerly said, Oh, yes, I'll come. And she did attend. And while Pearl was there, she heard about the bigness of God and how he could do all things. She heard about how God can raise the dead, heal the sick, clothe the naked. She heard about all of this stuff. And she said, I said to myself, this is the God I want to serve. And guess what? She said about six months before these two ladies came, I had given up so much. And as the evangelist went on and on, he was telling us to give up certain things. She said, and I started to laugh. I said, I'd already given that up six months ago. I'd already decided not to wear this or dress this way. Or dress she said, the Holy Spirit was leading me all the while. But the two ladies who were on their feet with their flyer in their hand on the, with the gospel beat found my sister, our sister in Christ. Now that was her testimony. And I so appreciated her testimony. For her, it was a great adventure. It had been planned because of prayer. She said, I prayed and I asked God. And we know he works in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. And Pearl got what she asked for. And we know that God will help us find his people. I have experienced it and I must share it now. There's another friend I told you was two. Down in uh, 120 and whatever in 45, you said. This next friend's name was Hazel. And Hazel was a good friend of mine who was just talking one day and I happened to listen in. She was talking about God and what a fine God we serve and how she loved him with all her heart. She said, I was on the bus stop and I had just come out of a church. She said, I kept looking for what I call was a true church. She said, I went on my knees and I said, dear father, I know somewhere in this town of Baton Rouge, you have the true church. She says, everybody uses the Bible, I know. She said, but sometimes these standards are too low. She said, God has high standards and I want to 
fellowship and worship with folk who, who have high standards and who follow God's word. And she said, I just, every time somebody on my job says, would you go to church with me? We are having this. She said, oh, yes. She said, I sometimes used to volunteer and say, I'll come to church with you. She says, because I really was looking for God's true church. So she went to church, got off the bus. I mean, got, uh, got out of church, went to the bus stop, sat on her bus and started talking about church again. She said, oh yeah, I just came out of that church to another lady. And the lady said, oh, did you have a good time? She said, it was a wonderful service, a nice service. She said, oh, I love to go to church so much because she was still looking for the true church. And the lady told Pearl, well, why don't you come to my church? She said, oh, your church? She said, yes. She said, where is your church? She said, and the lady took her time and wrote down where it was on South 14th Street and when it was, what time it was and everything. And Pearl said they parted ways. The lady went her way, she went her way. She said, and I told her I will be there next Sunday. And when Pearl got home, much to her chagrin, the church she was going to was not on Sunday, but it was on Saturday. And Pearl said, oh, this will take some getting used to. But while Pearl was musing about what was going to go happen to her that Saturday, she dreamed a dream. She said, I, was, I went to sleep after prayer and I asked God, I said, before I went to sleep, I said, please let me find your true church. See, I have been praying this prayer. Lord, answer my prayer. And she said, in her dream, she saw a baptistry. She saw the pulpit. She saw the walls. She saw the whole sanctuary. She said, and she was just looking around at what she saw. And she said, all of that came to her. When she got up, she said, I have found God's true church. She said, and I said to myself, Lord, I will continue to look for it until I worship with your people. Well, she took up, took the bus, went on South 14th Street and into the church. She saw her friend say hello and sat down. It was new for her because she had never observed Saturday as the Sabbath. And she said, when she settled in and start looking around, there was the baptistry. There was the pulpit. There were the walls and pictures and things that she had seen in the dream. And she said, Lord, I have found your true church. I have found your people with high standards. I will follow you. And if you help me, I'll be back to this church. And on her way out of the church, she said, our friend say, did you enjoy the service? She said, oh, yes. She said, Would you? oh, she said, I'm going to come back. She said, well, what about, why, why not have some Bible studies with us? She said, I eagerly said, yes, I'll study the Bible with you. She said, I didn't tell my friend but I knew what I was gonna do. Time went on, she had the Bible studies. She became a member of God's true church. You see, the testimony of the witness. Oh yes, the testimony of the witness. They said, I have found the true church. When we pray and agonize with God, we will be a success. So when we take our handbills in about a week or two and knock on doors, tell our friends, our loved ones, our coworkers, down the street, up the street, wherever we go, God will do something great. Because some people have a testimony. They're waiting. They're saying, where, where is the church? Where are your people with high standards, Lord? Where are your people 
who believe in righteousness, help me to find them. And he will. So we will get off our seats, on our feet, into the street with the gospel beat. Because God is going to see that what he has promised will be fulfilled. He said, go, go into all the world, preach the gospel, and I'm going to be with you. And praise God, he's going to keep his promise. Now, my friends, this is what we will do. We're going to go out in twos in 2022. Have a blessed evening and bless your heart. Let's witness for Christ. Thank you. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Sister Lawrence, Elder Lawrence, uh, for that word. Thank you for sharing uh, that testimony. Um, you know, it's, e it's, it's easier to talk about what witnessing is and what the gospel is, but, but when we hear actual testimonies of what the gospel does, we realize what it means for the gospel to become flesh. So thank you so much. And if you were blessed by this word at this time, please unmute, unmute your devices and let other Lawrence know um, that she blessed your heart with her, her word this evening. Amen. 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 Elder Lawrence, God bless amen. us. Amen. 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 Thank you again. At this time, we will transition as we always do to our giving. And as we are getting ready for our evangelistic series that will be starting next month we need all hands on deck but we also need finances to support what it is that we're trying to do at the William seventh day adventist church uh, we we know that it's not an easy job we know that it's not something that's going to come seamlessly so we are just praying that you will be open to what god is doing and that god will impress upon you to give in the way that are outlined on the screen you can give by mail, 4555 Fairfields Avenue, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70802. You can give online, www.bereanbatonrouge.com, clicking on online giving. And most, the easiest way you can give is merely giving to our cash app dollar sign, B-E-R-E-A-N, 4555. So let us pray. Dear most kind and gracious Father, we thank you for this word that you've given us. Lord, I pray that as we embark on this evangelistic series, that we will open our pockets, not just open our hearts, but open our pockets, open our mouths so we can be brave in asking others to contribute financially to the work that is being done at Berean. I pray and I thank you for the jobs that you've given us so that we can give back to you and contribute to the adv advancement of the kingdom. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. At this time, we will transition into our, our plus, hour of power plus, and this is a time that you have a chance to um, share whatever reflection that you have or may have on the word that was shared tonight, anything that was impressed upon you, anything that God deposited into your heart, um, you may share it at this time. You never know, somebody else may be blessed by what you were blessed by. I, th I thank God for uh, for using Elder Lawrence, and there's something about the power, but something about the power of the testimony that 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 never grows old. Uh, that that testimony is still as relevant today as it was back then, and uh, I never had the opportunity of attending the 14th Church Street, so I know that's several years ago, but uh, just just the power. Uh, of their testimony, and this lady was was willing and uh, to be led by God. She was shown through a dream, and uh, when she attended the church, that validated her dream. So uh, she knew she was in the right place, and it's like uh, uh, it was settled in her mind that she was at the right place. So uh, because of the years that's passed in between then and now, we still can see how relevant, how powerful that personal testimony is. And God gives us all personal testimonies. So that's one thing we can have. We may never stand in a pulpit or, 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 or some kind of formal setting, but something personal can have just as much of an effect. So thank you for holding on to that testimony and sharing it with us, Elder Lawrence. 
Amen. It's it's one thing to hear that God is good, but it's another thing to hear how God has been good to you specifically. Um, that really puts meat to our encouragement to other people to, to specifically hear in different situations, in different circumstances, how the gospel brought life to you, how the gospel changed your life. So as you said, Elder Boucher, it's just, it's, it's just a different level when we hear specifically how God worked in somebody's life. Anyone else? Yes, Elder. I would like to also add, uh, that was what, what, I, what I gleaned from it was that God has high standards. God has high standards. God does not want us lowering our standards for any, any religiosity, any spirit allergy, any church. He wants us to have high standards. And when we go out, we need to keep our principles and our boundaries intact. I love that part of the message. That's what I took away from it, that God does not lower his standards for us. We come up to his standards. Thank you so much, uh, Elder Lawrence, for that message this evening. Brother Pugh here. Sister Elder Lawrence, thank you for that message. You brought back memories to me uh, about how it was that I came to this church. I was walking one day, and a guy that I had known, well, not long, he came to me and he said, uh, you know you're worshiping on the wrong day. So I was ready to defend my position with him, you know, but at the same time, I was a person that, well, I wanted to check out what he said because I'm not a confrontational person, but I'm also willing to learn. So when he said that, he told me, he said, look, uh, I got some books for you. And he gave me some literature and I started reading that literature and I started to, to think about what it was that my desire was when I first approached God and I asked him, I said, Lord, I don't know, teach me. So he put people in my way and these same people are us today. So I'm just so thankful for the message that you came up with this evening that, you know, that we should go out because a word that we say, we never know what effect that that's going to have on another individual that might be searching for the truth. So I'm just so thankful for what you brought to us this evening, and it just touched my heart. Praise God for you, Elder Lawrence. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, as I, as I listened to it, it reminds me, reminded me of something that I learned a long time ago when I first came into uh, the Adventist church. And, and we were studying, we used to study in different groups. And I remember uh, the facilitator told us, we must always remember that our practice needs to be in harmony with our profession because we never know who God is gonna bring into our sphere. And see, people are out there searching for the Lord and the spirit is working on hearts and minds. And you never know when God is going to use, bring someone in to your sphere for you to uh, uh, be that light, that, 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 that special uh, uh, person to uh, strike up a relationship with them and, and, and usher them all the way on in. Because God got people out there searching for his truth, people we're not even aware of. But we have to be those watchmen on the wall and we have to be living this truth that we profess to believe because God is gonna bring people into our sphere. And, 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 and I, it sometimes is the only witness that we're gonna be able to share is the life that we live. So we, we need to be cognizant of that. And I thank Elder Lawrence for, uh, for reminding us of that, especially when we are about to embark upon this re upcoming revival. Let us remember about the people around them and let's ask ourselves, what do they see as they interact with us, as they look at us? What do they see? Thank you. Oh, Andrew, I'm so glad you brought that up uh, because, you know, when we meet people that we are witnessing to, I think there is an unspoken assumption that when we're speaking to them, that is the first time they're hearing the word or that is their first encounter with God. But you don't That's know right. where, what, where in the process God has them. So it's kind of when you're hammering away at something and then finally that last hit, it breaks. 
but it's not really that's the last right. hit that broke it. It was it's been that's you right. know, the hits a constant hammering. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Finally. So you we don't know. So when God right. allows us to um meet somebody wherever they are, that's right. Woe, woe unto us if we're not ready to play the role that God ordained for us mercy. to play. Because regardless, God is gonna bring into the kingdom. What's going to suck is if I didn't get to play the role that God wanted me to play in there because I wasn't ready, whether that be because I, 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 as first Peter said, you know, always be ready to give a defense for the gospel or my life <laughs> was not, is not That's in alignment right. with what I'm supposed That's to be right. playing with this person because it's hard to witness to something you're not living. Right. And so um, I don't want to be the person who misses out on, on the opportunity to play a role in what God is doing. I don't want to be a person who sits on the sideline and sees it happening. And I could have been a part of that story, but I, but because yeah. of my own detriment or yeah. irrespons spiritual irresponsibility, I lose that opportunity. And so I'm glad you really, you brought that point up in connection to what other Lawrence was talking about. Yes. Amen. Anyone else? If not, thank you so much, Elder Lawrence, once again, and thank you for everyone who shared their input, their insight, and their reflection. At this time, we'll have a benediction by Elder Landry. Okay, and I, I want to take a moment just to thank Elder Manuska for stepping in for me. Uh, I had a glitch with this phone. This weather is kind of acting up over here. I had to even call Elder Prochet to find out if I was dialing the right number. But uh, yeah, it was something going on there and I just couldn't get in. And I'm sorry, I apologize for being late. But again, thank you, Elder, for stepping up and standing in the gap, doing a wonderful job. Uh, let us pray. Our Father and our God, we're just so thankful, Lord, for another given privilege to come into your holy presence. And as we prepare, Lord, to get off this line after sharing in this hour of power, Fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, and prepare us for what you have in store for us for the rest of the night, for tomorrow, as we face a new day by your grace, Lord. Be with us, guide us, keep us, but above all, Lord, let us be a witness to someone around us, Lord, that, that they will see something in us that would make them ask themselves the question, what must I do to be saved, Lord? And then, Lord, use us as your witnesses, Lord, uh, to bring that the, your words of life, words of hope, Lord, words that keep us from growing weary or well-doing. And we'll be careful, Father, to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In the worthy name of Jesus, we do ask and pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, everybody. See you this Saturday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. Have a good night.